and they were fainting. They were dismayed. Remember in Matthew 9? And he had to raise up leaders after his own heart. That's my insertion. So they won't be scattered anymore. So this sheep gate is very, 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 very important. Because this is the very place, not only were they next to a water, a pool of water, but they were next to the sheep gate, the entry point. So these sheep was impotent, they were blind, they were withered, they were halted. Amen. Amen. Now let's dis dis dissect this. Let me just say, we were, all of us were sheep without a shepherd one time or another. Mm -hmm. So this story kind of fits all of us. Some of us are still infinite, blind, hard, and withered, but most of us at one time or another felt that because we didn't have a shepherd for us. And how you hear, you, now all of a sudden they were waiting on the angel. They were waiting on something phenomenal, but here you have the, the great shepherd, yeah. the good shepherd, who's willing to lay his life down for the sheep. Amen? Amen. And this great shepherd is going to bring mercy and grace. So out of this whole story in John 5, we're going to be able to dissect some mercy and grace that we're going to have so we can, you know, take, take charge, uh, not, not allow our bed to control us or our condition to speak to us. We don't have to worry about waiting on the waters to move. So let me dissect this. The word impotent. Those who are feeble and unable to impart life normally. To live the supernatural naturally. To live the supernatural in natural form. In other words, your understanding never made room for what you hear. And we got people that are impotent in fivefold churches. Churches that are built by and built on grace and mercy. Yeah. Yeah. But we still have folks who one time or another were sheep. One time or another had shepherds. Mm -hmm. But they, they're in a condition where they're no longer able to produce. They're impotent. Mm -hmm. I know mean, God is trying to raise up people that are no longer impotent. Amen. He wants us to no longer be impotent. Unable to produce the scriptures. No longer just having the form. Or denying the power thereof. No longer having to go from ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. No longer just having to sit there and just at the service, at the service, at the service, just hear somebody <coughs> talk and articulate <coughs> and share out of their experience. The infinite person is so enamored with somebody else's experience. You can tell when you're impotent because you're excited when somebody tells you about their breakthrough. You haven't had the encounter. You haven't seen God. You haven't heard from God. Yourself. You search the scriptures. But you won't come to him to have eternal life. Impotent. The church has been so impotent. But we carry a seed of divinity. We carry a seed that is full of power and majesty. We are seed carriers. We are sons of the Most High God. There is no way that we should have destruction around us. Chaos and, you know, cataclysmic stuff, upheaval. Those things should not be named among us. Every, you know, sooner or later, the scripture is going to become real. That what the scripture says, that whatsoever your hands are touched, going to be blessed. When are they going to be blessed? Sometimes you have to persuade yourself. The sons of Sceva was impotent, impotent people. They were into the people, impotent people. And you know why they were impotent? Because they said, Jesus, they, <laughs> when the, the, they said, we adjure you by the God that Paul preaches. <laughs> now they didn't adjure the demons that come out of the man because of their relationship. They didn't know as, as a believer that these signs should follow them. Oh boy. We still haven't figured out signs to follow us. 
that we can hear from God legitimately without any restrictions. Yeah, it takes homework. <laughs> I'm not one of them grace preachers to tell you it don't cost anything. <laughs> to get in the door, it don't cost anything. <clears throat> Once you get in the door, it's going to cost you something. That's right. And as you're willing to sacrifice certain things, mm -hmm. there are promotions. Yes. And God has started revealing himself to you. And I'm, 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 I'm serious. God wants us to get to a place that we can replicate and we can reproduce after our own kind. I asked God, I said, God, I want to hear. I just don't want to have a, a healthy marriage by myself. All right. I just don't want to be able to hear your voice accurately by myself. I don't just want to teach by myself. I got, I got plenty of ways to teach and preach. I just don't want to just prophesy and cast out devil and do the work of the ministry by myself. I don't. Y'all can look at me smirking and stuff and think I'm lying. I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart. This thing didn't come in me when I became a pastor. I always had this in me. I always uh, had a broken and contrite spirit. I, I, I know where this stuff comes from. I, I know it comes from God. I know there's nothing I can do with my own. That's the fact. But I know that it shouldn't be in a certain state all the time either. I know that what's been put in me is supposed to be passed on. <laughs> yes. And not just in theory. Come on. Come on. Not just in theory. Not just when you can repeat it. Infinite people don't, don't mind the language. Mm -hmm. They don't mind discussing it. Mm -hmm. They just have a real hard time demonstrating it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have people say, well, that can't be true. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah, it can be. This is real. Yes. Mm -hmm. This here as a man of God is real. Yes. And it can be real for you. Yeah. Amen. It's one loaf with different slices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Stop being a butt bread. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't know. But I've been through so much. But you just don't I'm in the butt bread, man. <laughs> Blind folks. Who couldn't see anything, especially in the Word. They have no vision. They lack understanding of Scripture. You have to ask God. Say, God, open up the eyes of my understanding. We need people in the church that can have... How, how can you be in an apostolic ministry that understand mercy and grace and still be blind? I'm going to tell you how. Pride. Yeah. Remember I gave you the scripture in John 9 where he told the, the spirit is empty. Because you say you see, you don't see. Right. When you think you got it, you ain't got it. That's why he tell you that unless you become a little child, you can't get into the kingdom. I make sure that I stay humble. I don't care what he do. And God has lately been doing some great things, but I'm, I'm going to stay humble with it because I understand where it comes from. Amen. I wasn't born with it. <laughs> and sometimes I can't keep up with it. Come on. <laughs> but I know where it came from. It came from the throne. It came from God. Amen. It's his DNA. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It didn't come by, like, like it said in John uh, what, uh, 1 and 13, it wasn't of the will of the flesh or the will of man or the blood, but of God. We can't be blind. We cannot be blind. Religion will keep you blind. He said the blind lead the blind. They both fall in the ditch. Both of them. Not only the teacher, but the student can't do anything. Has no foundation. That's what a ditch means. It has no foundation. We need a foundation. Blind people need a foundation. You can show, you can show me a person. I, can, I know a blind person all the time because they walk around aimlessly. They, they always spill it through life. I always try to touch something. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Look at what's up to hold on to. Well, wow. Yeah. I had to touch something. They have no sense of direction. 
Means they have no purpose. Nothing burning in them. Just leave it to the building. Who might see that? You preach it. <laughs> yeah, just give me the three fourth in Henderson Avenue. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> this is not what God called us to become. We're supposed to lift up our eyes to the hills when it comes our help. We're supposed to be able to see him high and lifted up. Far above every principality, throne, dominion, things to come, things that are happening now. Ain't whatever. You know the 17 in Romans 8? All those things. Death, life, all that. We're supposed to see him. Because when we see it, we change. People come and tell me, well, uh, Apostle, God said, this is my time. This is my now. This is this. Look, I ain't got time for all that. That's, TM, that's tabloid Christianity. Keep it to yourself. Let your fruit bear witness to it. Not your lips. I've seen too many people, they're static. God told me. Whatever. If God told you, God will lead you. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? God never told you anything to lead you there. He's specific. You don't have to know all the details, but something starts germinating in your spirit. You say, you know what? I can't stay in this state. And you start walking towards what he's calling you to. Stop playing games. Halt. 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 Oh, I know when I say halt, they probably... Caught you. How long am I what? Hop between what? Two opinions. I know it. You know, theologians. They didn't have a steady walk in the spirit. They were limited from making progress onward and upward. There's two ways you're supposed to make progress as believers onward and upward. Amen? That means you have influence and you have maturity. When your walk is steady, People start taking notice. There's a reputation when you're no longer halted. People can recognize the rhythm that you represent. Something distinctively different about you. We can't be halted. And halted is a product of you depending on something. That's one way to be halted. Indecision. Indecisive. I have a big problem with that's one of my biggest problems, is an indecisive person. 